Probably the most shocking of all things that we've learned in the aftermath so far, Alec Murdoch's brother speaking out. And this is a case where he is saying things which, I, I, you know, you don't know. You don't know what's going through the minds of everyone. What you do have to understand, though, is in a murder trial where there's evidence and some very incriminating evidence, um, relatives are people, right? So they have the emotional connection uh, to the people involved in the case. So in this case, Murdoch family members connected to the victims to a certain extent, but more connected, like in this case, his brother, to his brother who's on trial. So you've got the emotional connection, but they're not stupid. They're not naive. So they see things the way they see things. So, so let's start there. Let's start tonight uh, with Alec Murdoch's brother, um, who spoke with the New York Times and is breaking his silence. Uh, listen to this. This is what Randy Murdoch, according to the New York Times, is saying. Randy Murdoch said he had no doubt that his brother was a serial liar and a thief. He said he also believed that Alec had not told the whole truth about what he knew about the killings. The whole truth. Wow. He knows more than what he is saying, Randy said. He's not telling the truth, in my opinion, about everything there. That is shocking but I think is, is consistent with a lot of what, what a lot of people are thinking. But what exactly does that mean? Someone else was there, he knows something, he's involved in something else, or he actually believes that his brother pulled the trigger. Now, he goes on to say, Randy said he also began to think back on Alex's behavior in the first few weeks after the murders. At the time, it seemed like uh, the police had few leads, and Randy began to call just about everyone he thought might help, asking if they had heard anything to suggest why Maggie and Paul might have been targeted. He passed on whatever he heard to the police. I spent considerable time day after day for weeks end calling people, he said, but Alex, he said, never did. Wow. How about that? He didn't say everything he knew. He didn't speak the whole truth. And while everyone else is like, Rand, Rand, these brothers, like trying to figure out why they would be targeted, Alex never asking those questions. Incredibly insightful. Let's bring in our guest, Matt Harris, host of the Murdoch Family Murders Impact of Influence podcast. How about this? Matt, how mm. about Randall speaking out in the words? This is a Murdoch speaking about another Murdoch. It's a convicted murdering Murdoch who murdered two other Murdochs. But nonetheless, I am, I'm a little surprised, a little shocked. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, he is Randolph Murdoch IV, if you're keeping track. So he was the one named after the long line of solicitors in that area. And he was the the book smart one, the one that was very serious, head down, and uh, did his job. And I think if anybody would be hurt by what Alex did, even just by the financials, the most, it would be Randy. It was the law firm where Randy worked, two years older than Alec. It was the, the long line of Murdochs for 100 years, 100 plus years, that had run that town and that law firm so if anybody is going to feel the, the the most sting if there's you know if you had to put levels of pain i guess how badly it must have hurt randy to be in this law firm with all his uh partners and right under his nose next office over is his slightly younger party or brother who has been pulling this nonsense for 20 years and Randy didn't catch it, not that he should have, but I'm thinking in his head, he's gotta feel some, a bit of guilt about that, right? Uh, and as far as, uh, you know, one of the things he talked about was why he wasn't on the stand. And he said one of the reasons it was maybe that neither side felt he would be as helpful. And I think also we go back to that, you know, do you want another lawyer testifying, testifying for, you know, Alec? Um, but Randy's the outdoorsman, he's, he's the, the studious one, and I'm telling you, he had to feel the most burnt by this uh, whole legacy come tumbling down at the hands of his little brother. Yeah, I mean, that's his name. 
Yeah. That's Randall Murdoch. I mean, he is a Murdoch through and through, as you mentioned, named after the line of these uh, men who have controlled the criminal courts uh, down there in that part of the, uh, the low country of South Carolina for a century. And it's his little brother destroys his law firm, destroys his family name. He knows he's a serial liar. He knows he's a thief. And my guess is from the words that he's saying, um, he, he's not putting it past his brother to either com actually committed this crime or in the alternative, know a lot more about exactly how all of this happened on the property that night. Yeah, it seems like he's leaning toward, because the thing he says he can't get his head around, like many people can't, this image of Alec being this protective father and loving husband and then doing this unspeakable violence to them at close range, no less. He's, he, he grapples with that. And I, I, the implication I get from the article is Alec knows or Alec was there, but he just will not accept that Alec pulled the trigger. And that's not, he's not the only one that has those questions, right? No, there's a, there's, there's a lot of people I spoke to. I think we both spoke to when we were down there. A lot of people mm -hmm. think that he's, he, Alec was absolutely involved. He, you know, and he was there and he knew what happened. Um, mm -hmm. The jury ultimately believed that he pulled the trigger as prosecutors right. argued in this case. And, and, I, and I believe that based upon the evidence. But there are a lot of people suspect that there's another level to this whole story perhaps involving someone else because of all the things that Alec was involved with, all these millions of dollars that still really aren't accounted for. Like, where did all this money go? Who else is he hooked mm -hmm. up with? And, and you know, to me, that, that, that word, he believed that Alec had not told the whole truth. He knows more right. than what he's saying. And this is, you know, Alec has been speaking from the beginning, and still there's yeah. more... Uh, Randall believes that he knows that he is not uttering for the world to hear and for the rest of his family to hear. Well, yeah, I mean, you you, you even think about, let's let's say he didn't do it. Let's There's this tight timeline with him getting cleaned up and all whatever. Is it impossible to imagine someone is else is there helping him? I know that, that it wasn't seen that way by the jury, and I'm not saying there was, but it certainly is not like some outlandish thing to think is a possibility from this uh, lying Murdoch. And I think, you know, Randy is trying to hold on to what little is left. He is the guy now, because the attorney in the out of the four, who's going behind uh, Alec, like, you know, the guys with the little brooms behind the elephant in the parade are cleaning up all the poop. I mean, he was even in, uh, in one of the courtrooms nearby when Alec was on trial, trying to straighten out payment. He's digging through all the finances. He's taking it upon himself to make to try to make sure he doesn't miss anything, because he doesn't want to get caught up in this this web of financial misdeeds that Alec was doing. He doesn't want to have any bit of possible light on him. So not only losing a ton of money personally, losing his law firm, now spending hours and hours cleaning up his younger brother's crapola that's been shot all over the town. Uh, he's he's got to live with a, the legacy falling and trying to get his head around losing his nephew and his sister-in-law. And this, by all accounts, tight family, vacation together, had river houses together, did a lot of things together, and never, ever, ever will that get together be the same. Do we know if, does Randall have children as well? Do we know? Because to me, that's another thing that would really impact him because you've not only messed up okay my ability but now my my children my the next generation now has to live with the the this this taint that you have created this mistrust of our family name uh the 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 um scourge of the community knowing that oh you're a murdoch oh boy oh i know right. all about him like oh yeah every time his children have to go somewhere then all of a sudden they're somehow connected to all of this yeah, I know that John Marvin has children, younger children. Um, I believe Randy does, but I'll check on that for you in a couple of seconds. But I, I, I know that you're right. Uh, you used to be able to walk around and say, I'm a Murdoch. And regardless of what people thought about you, you had the influence. That's the impact of influence. You had the power. And and also, you know, it, when we first started doing this, there was many people who were 
would talk about the many good things the Murdochs did, and I'm not saying this to discount any of the nonsense Alec did, but you know they did charitable events and baseball and softball teams, and there was a, uh, a hurricane down there one year or a tornado, uh, and they brought out all these big uh, washing machines to help everybody in Hampton uh, get their laundry done, et cetera. So there, there were things that they did that people enjoyed what they think you know they would uh there's plenty of stories about them taking someone's case on pro bono who was part of the hampton community and i'm sure that that is where they'd rather be remembered for than all the the junk that has tragedy and drama that has happened over the last uh, year and a half